Did Jesus pay for all your sins? Well, uh, this is going to be an interesting study and one that's going to be somewhat of a kick uh, to a lot of people. And um, it's going to be a hard sermon. Uh, it's very hard for me to preach this. Um, and please bear with me. I want you to understand what I'm saying here. What is our standard? Okay. Well, uh, the Baptist Confession of 1483 or something. No. Uh, what is our standard? Well, the Catechism. Well, a popular opinion. Um, the Book of Discipline. The Book of Mormon. <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. What is our standard? Right here, the scriptures. Now, I understand that you can get carried away with such and such word does not appear in the Bible, and so therefore, you know, you should get rid of it, and it's heretic or so. I, I understand that you can take some of that too far because there are concepts that do appear in scripture, and we use like the word Bible. Well, scripture is what's in the scriptures. But if you say Bible, you're not going to go to hell for that. Okay, the, whatever. There are certain concepts in Scripture that might not be exactly word for word in there. Again, I've talked about that in other studies. Don't just deny certain things. And in the sense of, did Jesus pay for all of your sins? Well, he bought you. He paid the ultimate price on the cross. We understand that. But what I'm trying to get through to you today is, I think I have been leaving something out when it comes to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ that I just kind of think, well, it's obvious, but maybe to some people it's not. And that is very important, um, a very important thing, and that is when you live in sin as a Christian, you will pay for that, all right? Um, you're not going to lose your salvation. Uh, let me, let me get into the scriptures here and you'll see what I'm saying. So the term pay for sin or Jesus, you know, pay, pays for your sins or whatever. Is that anywhere in scripture? No. Jesus paid it all. Like the old hymn says, Jesus paid for everything. Is paid for sins in scripture. No. You can look it up. I looked at every single reference, read every single reference. Not once is it referring to Jesus' death on the cross and paying for sins. All right, now, I'm sure I've said that Jesus will pay for your sins and that he'll, your, your sins are all paid for. So I'm not going to go back and say I'm going to erase every time I've ever said it and whatever else. And, I, and I'm not saying it's heretical to say that. What I'm saying is I think I need to clarify something. You see, this ministry gets a lot of letters from people. And I've seen this thing over the years, and I've seen it in my dealings with people over the years. They'll get saved. And then they make a total wreck of their life because they don't take the seriousness of sin into account. They don't understand, hey, once you get saved, you have some major enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil, and your flesh is going to attack you on a whole new level. And you get into the salvation and you think, oh, wow, this is great. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And all of a sudden, your whole life can just fall apart. I've seen young people that get saved and all of a sudden, they're involved in sex perversion. They get into drugs. They, their life just gets ruined. Why? Well, because in their mind, they're thinking, since Jesus paid for my sins, then that means I don't have to even think about it anymore. I don't have to be sober and vigilant anymore. I can just do whatever I want. I don't have to fight against sin. I don't have to crucify my flesh. That's what this study is about. I am not trying to do a work salvation thing at at all. Work salvation is ex it excludes the cross. Please understand that. Jesus' death on the cross is not enough to wash away your sins. His blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. It's, it's saying, no, get rid of that. What I'm talking about in this study is not anything to do with eternity. Okay? You get saved, your eternity is fixed, you are sealed until the day of redemption, Ephesians chapter 1. That's, that's not there. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything against eternal security. What I'm saying is, what you need to get, if you sin, you will pay for that sin in this life. And I think that I have been maybe not as strong as I should be on that. 
And I think a lot of people get confused with what I try to preach and teach, that you have to have a changed life and you, there needs to be some difference there and, and things between you and the lost. I think I need to hit sin a little bit harder. That's the point of this study. Nothing to do with eternal destination. Okay, I do believe in eternal security. Once saved, always saved, whatever you want to call it right now. Okay, absolutely, not a problem. But what I'm saying is, when you get saved and you mess with, around with sin, you pay for it. And I am living proof of that. Uh, there's a lot of things that are wrong with me, and I just I deal with it. Why? Because I know the sins of my past. I know the dumb things that I've done. I deserve anything bad that I get. We'll get more into that as we continue. Romans chapter 6. I guess I'm just getting a little bit sick and tired of getting letters from, from people. And, oh, brother, you know, I got saved back, you know, under your ministry. And I, I got, you know, I was really reading the Bible and doing good. And I was witnessing to people and everything else. And then I got around with some old friends. And, and I, I went out and I got drunk. And then I moved in with this girl. And, and we started having fornication. And then, and then I got into this. And I got into that. And I started doing drugs again. And, I got, you know, and now I'm, my life is messed up. And I... You have to understand the serious nature of sin. And that's what this video, that's what this sermon is about. Romans chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. And you can read all of Romans chapter 6, by the way. It's, it goes in line exactly with what I'm trying to preach today. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Now who's it talking to there? Is it talking to lost people? No, it's talking to save people. And that's important because verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In context, who is it talking about? We well, say what well, could it line up with lost people. Yeah, but in context, it's talking about saved people. The wages of sin is death. Well, Jesus paid it all on the cross. He paid for everything. Well, eternally that might be true or not might be it is true eternally but in this life you mess around with sin you're the one who's going to pay you eat a bunch of junk food for years and years and years all of a sudden you get saved and all your, your health just is perfect <laughs> no Especially if you continue to eat the junk food after you get saved. What do you think is going to happen to you? You see what I'm saying? Hey, I got a bunch of tattoos, a bunch of biker tattoos, and a bunch of satanic 666. And you know, I knew a guy that one time had a, a woman in a bikini from his whole forearm. You know, my uh, brother-in-law's father, actually. He was a preacher. Got it when he was in the Navy. And boy, as soon as he got saved... Jesus' name, amen. Boing, and poof, the tattoo disappeared. It was amazing. No. It's still there, you see. The scars of sin will stay with you forever. And you can go out. You know one of the reasons I just recently did a study not long ago saying that video games are a sin? You know why? Because I understand what sin is. I understand the sins that I've dealt with. And I know what would happen to me if I went back to playing video games. I'd get right back into the addiction again. And I'd wreck my life. Mm -hmm. You have to flee from that stuff. You stay away from sin. You say, I don't, no, I don't, no, thank you. No, I don't want anything to do with that. As a Christian, you have to be a cynophobe. <laughs> afraid of sin. You have to say, no I, no, I don't want that. The wages of sin is death. Get that away from me. I don't want anything to do with that. Why? I messed up my life enough, and I already am in dealing with enough. You know what would happen to me if I started looking at pornography again? Like a lot of the people out there, a lot of you out there, you're, you're clean from it, and then you fall back into it. How do you feel when you fall back into it? What would happen to me? I've had victory over that thing for years and years now. Praise the Lord. That was a long, difficult road, believe me. Uh, it didn't just happen as soon as I got saved. I have scars on my body for different times where the Lord had to correct me because I was being too thick-headed and I wouldn't give up that sin. But what would happen to me if I did it right now? Do you think that God would continue to bless this ministry? Not on your life. 
No, well, Jesus paid it all on the cross. You know, why would you make a problem about sin? It's not a big deal. Okay, yeah, you shouldn't technically, but imputed righteousness, you're, you're technically sinless in God's sight, so go ahead and enjoy your sin. No, no, no. The wages of sin is death. I don't want to go back to that life. I don't want to go back to that cursed stuff. Sometimes I get a little bit rough on sin and I don't, I don't explain myself correctly. And I say, if somebody's just doing sin and they don't care and there's no conviction or whatever else, I don't think that they're saved. And people say, it's work salvation, lordship salvation. It's not what I'm preaching. I, you know, if people would actually see me in, in person and talk to me and say, hey, could you please explain this a little bit better? Yeah, I'll explain it better. I don't teach work salvation. I teach you how to fight against sin. Why? Because you earn wages. You will pay for your sin. I go out and I get drunk tonight and I go fornicate with some woman and I get, you know, whatever. and I could do a whole bunch of things. Guess who gets to pay for that? It's not put on the, the tab of Jesus Christ and things. It's put on me. I have to pay for it. The Lord would wreck my life. Don't tell me, Lord, just say, oh, well, you know, okay, well, I can't say anything because, you know, it's all forgiven. Don't worry about it. We paid for everything, you know, on the cross. Don't worry. No, no, I would be paying for it. And you need to understand that. If you are saved and you mess with sin, it's on you. Let me show you some more scriptures. Re Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. There you go. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Whatever we do, it's been paid for. To Keep reading. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The Lord puts a conditional clause in there. There's no condemnation to you unless you're walking after the flesh. Verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Okay, You can't fight your sins if you're lost. I better say that one more time. You can't fight your sins if you are lost. You will just continue to mess up. Okay, so when I say you have to give up certain sins, it's after salvation. Not give up the sins and eventually God will save you. That's Lordship salvation. I'm saying God saves you and then he teaches you to get rid of your sins and helps you to get rid of your sins. That's what it's talking about right there. It's a bunch of stinking heretics. Quit your lying about me. I don't teach Lordship salvation. I don't teach works salvation. Verse 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, again, conditional. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. God's righteousness, imputed righteousness that comes to you, it might be fulfilled in you, who walk not after the flesh. If you walk after the flesh, you're not going to be fulfilling the righteousness of God. You're not going to look like a righteous man. If I get caught with a prostitute later on the night and I'm drunk, do I look like a righteous man? All over the internet. You know, internet preacher, King James Video Ministries got, you know, what's it look like? Is it righteousness? No. I would be walking after the flesh and I would have to pay for it. My life would be ruined. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. The wages of sin is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. This is being written to a Christian. Do you understand? Oh, brother, it's, it's all paid. Everything's paid for. Jesus paid it all. Well, that's a beautiful hymn. Not saying you shouldn't sing it. Not saying it's not true. But you know what? When it comes to sin in this life, if you live in sin, it will lead to your death. You want life and peace? Then you better start to get sanctified. You better get sin out of your life. You better not mess around. 
Well, I'm saved, but I can. I like to watch some TV now and then. I like to get down. Okay, I watch some movies now and then. I like to list it, name it. I don't. I, I get Playboy magazine. I I get it for the articles, not for the pictures. <laughs> yep, yeah, I've heard that one actually. Believe it or not. Well, I'll just put up a swimsuit calendar over here in my shop wall and everything else and whatever. I'm happily married, man. I bet you know, but you know, once in a while it doesn't hurt to look. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Why? Really? I've seen professing Christians do that. Mm -hmm. Walked into a professing Christian's wood shop the one time. Walked in, I looked over, and it was just, oh, yeah, great. That's nice. Older man. Swimsuit. Sports Illustrated swimsuit calendar. What are you doing? Well, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid everything. I don't have to worry about sin. Really? It's not what the Bible teaches. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How does that work? I'm saved, I'm born again, but I like to live in the flesh. I just like to give my flesh a lot of good things and whatever else. You cannot please God. I think that means God cares about you messing around with sin. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the Spirit or the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. You say, but but see, it's saying up here that the you know the spirit's there, and you're and you're, you don't you know you're not having these things imputed to you. It's talking about eternally. And it goes, and how do you know? It goes right back down to if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Verse 13, But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mortify the deeds of the body. You say, what does that mean? What is mortify? Well, what is a mortician? Somebody takes care of something that's dead. You have to kill certain things about yourself. Crucify the flesh. That's what you have to do. And again, I need to make this very clear. If you want to get saved, if you're lost and you're watching this, um, you have to understand when God purchases you, so you don't save yourself. God has to purchase you. And when he does, when you come to him with the right condition that you're a sinner, there's no more self-righteousness, you come to him and you get down on your knees and you say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Please, God, save me. And the Lord says, okay, I'll purchase you with my blood. You're my property now. Guess what? You have to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. We'll see that as we continue here. You say, well, I think I still have a right to, to, to sin, to live in sin and things. Um, no, you don't. How do you know? If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So it ties all in. And read Romans chapter 6 through Romans chapter 8. Read it. Read it for yourself. Meditate on those scriptures. You don't need me, as I talked about in the other study there on the expos lazy expository preaching. You don't need me. Go through it. Romans 6 through Romans chapter 8. You need to fight that sin in your life. Mortify it. Hey, oh, oh man, there's a... Hold on a second. Let me pause Brother Brian here for a minute. There's an interesting looking video here. Don't you dare click on that. But Jesus paid for all my sins, so technically I, I won't go to hell for doing this. But you'll die. You're living after the flesh. Stop! Well, you know, and I haven't been on this. Oh, oh, there my parents are leaving. Uh, oh, yeah, hey, we'll see you later. Yeah, we'll see you in a little bit. Hey, I could check out that one website. Go to click on it. Stop! Don't mess with it. Oh, 
phone's ringing. Oh, hey, hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah, hey, well, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, how you doing? Old friend from high school. Oh, you want me to come out? Yeah, we can hang out at the local whatever. Well, yeah, sure, you know, I, I guess it wouldn't hurt. You're living after the flesh. You got you get hanging out with your old friends. They get you messing around with things. And you get down through the list. I could list all kinds of things. You know what they are. You know what you struggle with. You have to mortify the deeds of the body. Here's a good one. Oh, yeah, hey, how you doing? Oh, what am I doing? Actually, I'm just reading my Bible right now. That's one of your old friends. I did that the one time. I said He said, so what are you up to? Best friend growing up. We knew each other before kindergarten. And a neighbor right down the road. And... Um, he said, so what have you been up to? I said, studying the Bible, preaching the Bible. And he laughed. You know why he laughed? Because he knew the kind of guy I was in the past before I got saved. He thought I was joking. And in the past, I would have been joking about that. Things changed. You know? Hey, uh, hey, Brother Brian, or, or hey, Brian, hey, Denlinger, you want to come out? High school reunion, bring your own beer. No, thank you. Why? I'm saved now. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Born again. I'm a fanatic now. I don't think you want me there. See you. Goodbye. Hey, uh, hey, Brian, um, why don't you check out this video? Hey, have you seen this movie? Yeah, it, it amazes me. I've heard preachers talk about watching Hollywood movies. Currently. Not, well, I saw this thing in the past and whatever else. I, I saw the. They're currently watching movies. And that's okay. That's fine. That's a problem. That's a problem. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Mortify the members of your flesh. Don't watch that. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I don't want anything to do with that. Now a little bit of alcohol now. Why? Why mess with it? Why mess with some cigarettes? Well, I like to smoke. I don't, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but I do smoke a pipe. Why? Why? What business do you have smoking? Smoke coming out of your mouth, out of your nose. Chapter and verse, please. Where does that, how does that help you? Hey, I want to do a little bit of marijuana. It puts me in touch with the spirit realm. You know what I mean? Uh, really? Mortify the members of your flesh. Fight against sin. You don't get some kind of free pass. Jesus died on the cross. He paid for everything and his blood washes away all my sins. So therefore, I can do whatever I feel like doing throughout my life. I'll just live wickedly because, hey, Jesus paid for everything. You've been deceived. Okay? If you're genuinely born again, yes, you've been purchased. That is true. You have been purchased. But if you live after the flesh, you will die. And you will suffer for it. You know, I, I have a lot of very horrible, terrible, perverted nightmares. I had one last night. Woke up this morning just, just shaking and just, oh, Lord God, I'm sorry for that dream. I don't even know where. It's been years since I looked at anything wicked and pornographic. And the stuff in my dreams, it's, stuff I, it, it's things I've never even imagined, never even thought of. Just spirits attacking me and whatever else. You say, well, that, that's just terrible. Well, it's terrible, but you know what? I deserve it. You know why? Because for years and years and years, I looked at pornographic garbage. I deserve whatever I have. I have back pain, and I have other types of pains and things like that, at little thorns in the flesh, ministers of Satan to buffet me. Oh, God, why would you allow this to happen to me? I'm your preacher. You shouldn't allow anything bad to happen to me. And the Lord says, uh, yeah, what about that stuff you did in your past? The pounds of sugar that you used to eat. Go to the candy store and come away with a couple pounds. I'd buy pounds of jelly beans and sit there and eat them while I'm playing video games. Go into the junk food places, Burger King, McDonald's, and Wendy's, and all the other garbage food, just stuffing that stuff in, drinking the poison pop. And I should just have perfect health after the Lord saved me. He should just forgive everything, forgive and forget. Come on, let's just, you know, let's not make a deal here. I'm paying for my sins. You see? 
He bought me. He purchased me. I get to go to heaven when I die. But you know what? I am paying for a life of wickedness. I think the Lord would have brought my wife to me earlier in my life if I hadn't been messing around with sin. The Lord had to wait till I got victory over pornography before he brought that wife to me. Like a lot of you young men out there. Just dabbling and dabbling and dabbling. And, and I'll go and, I'll, you know, brother, I'm not looking at pornography, but I'll just kind of go look at these girls that are a little bit inappropriately dressed and just kind of dwell a little bit on that, a little bit too much. Flee fornication. Mortify your members. Fight. Now, I'm just going to kind of dabble around and sin a little bit, but, you know, as soon as I need to, you know, God, please bring this nation back to us. God's not going to listen to a nation of people that mess around with sin. You understand that? I mean, I did my little video outdoors and things on the founding fathers versus modern patriots, but, you know, you can go a whole lot deeper. You can do a big study on that. They were people that didn't even know what pornography was. And I'm not just talking full-on wickedness and things, nudity and whatever else. I'm talking about a lot of the ways that women dress in public would have been considered pornographic in the 1700s. You say, what can I do about that? Don't look and lust. Don't look at them. Don't look and lust. You say, well, brother, I, I can't help it. Then maybe you should leave. Maybe you should leave the area where you're at. If it's just surrounded by a bunch of filthy people, you're living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, I don't really have a choice because this is where I was raised and this is where I have to grow up and this is where my job is and, you know, I have a good career here and I'm trying to, to raise... Maybe if Christians would all leave the cities and get out into the country, get away from the wickedness out there, maybe God could judge this nation. You know what I'm saying? See, we just don't take sin seriously. Galatians chapter 6. Oh, by the way, you know, if you could just pray for me here. I, I uh, got a rattlesnake the other day, a timber rattler, and real deadly one, real poison. I mean, bite you the first time, he can kill you in a couple minutes. It's in here somewhere. I, well, I don't care. Whatever. I just they let him in the house here. I don't, I don't really feel like killing him or getting him away or whatever. He's here somewhere. I don't know where. It could be here behind me. Or He said, are you crazy? Well, if I had done that in truth, yes, I would be. It's kind of like letting sin around. A bunch of sinful stuff in your home. A bunch of Hollywood movies. Well, I don't really watch it that much anymore. And, you know, and, and uh, a bunch of other things and whatever. Eh, maybe it's a little bit inappropriate and whatever. But yeah. yeah come on. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. There's even a condition put on that. You reap if you don't faint. You quit on the Lord and you start to forsake the Lord and forsake His Word and whatever, then you won't reap. So, Oh, it's, it's just such a wonderful life to be saved and you just don't have to do anything after you get saved. Oh, are you kidding me? You have to do all kinds of things. You have to fight sin. You have to mortify your members. You have to stay in the Word. You put this book down, you're, you're in trouble. You know, let me just walk out onto the battlefield without any weapons. Yeah, that's real smart. Let me just leave my armor back there. Leave my helmet off. And that shield? Nah, don't need it. I'm going to just go out here onto this vicious battlefield. The fighting's heating up all the time, getting worse and worse. I'm just going in unarmed. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And yet that's what a lot of Christians do. I've done it. Messing around with sin. Well, there's a law right there. A law of science. A law of the Lord. If you so to the flesh, it will come up. It will. It has to. The best thing that you can do is say, okay, I've had a lot of mess ups in the past there, so I'm going to try to sow as much to the Spirit as I can. I'm going to try to keep my mind on heaven as much as possible. I'm going to try to read the Word of God as much as possible. I'm not going to, every time I, a secular song comes into my mind, just say, shut up. I don't want to sing that stuff. Shut up, flesh. Shut up. Don't do it. 
I'm going to start singing hymns to the Lord. I'm going to start quoting scripture. I have to fight every day, every day. That's what you need to do. Or you can just mess around. Let the rattlesnakes in your house and just let them come around and, oh, you know, the danger of always being bit by sin. Yeah. You have to take a radical stand towards sin, brethren, if you want life and peace. A lot of people say, oh, Denlinger's such a nut. You can turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Denlinger's such a nut, moves out to the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you know why? Because I have a lust problem. We have about, uh, I think, a little less than 2,000 people here in the town of Patton and, and uh, surrounding areas. It's only a few hundred people and, and things. I hate that. I can't stand that. You say, oh, yeah, you wish there were more people so the economy was better. No, I wish there was a, a lot less people. I'm looking forward to the economy falling because I think a lot of these people are going to leave. I'd like to be able to go out to the lake in the summertime and not see anybody else. You say, well, you don't want to see families and stuff. I don't want to see women with bikinis on. I don't want to see swimming suits. I don't want to see a bunch of people out walking around and stuff, scantily clad. I don't want to see any of it. I would be happy if we were the only ones here in northern Maine. <laughs> That's how weird I am. You say, oh, the solitude. You couldn't handle the solitude. Oh, I would love the solitude. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm not afraid to witness to people and to talk to people. That's fine. But you know what? I want to fight sin. I want to live as victorious as I can. Because I remember the wicked things I've done in my past. I don't want to earn any more wages like that. I've gotten my sin paychecks a lot of times. And it never is nice. It's never good. I've almost uh, lost the use of my legs. Almost been crippled. Logging accident because I was messing around in sin. My thumb will never be normal. Messing around in sin. Cut it really bad the one time. I knew better. Lord punished me. He chastened me. Let me show you the proof. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 <clears throat> through 32. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Talking about just remembrance there, like a communion type of a thing, which you should do. It's a time of self-examination, saying, okay, Lord, what am I messing around with? You never get to a point where you say, I'm pure, I'm sinless, and whatever else. Again, people lie about me on that. Then they preach sinless perfection. I have never preached sinless perfection, and I never will. Okay? I would love to attain to sinless perfection. I really would. But I understand the weakness of my flesh. I understand the things that I continually struggle with. But you see, here's the point. There's a struggle in my life. I don't just accept who I am and enjoy my salvation and just go on out, and I don't even think about sin anymore. Oh, my goodness, no. No, 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 no. I am constantly having to watch my speech, watch what's in my head, watch what I'm looking at, watch what I'm reading, all the time, all the time. And the more sin I give up, the more peace I have, the more I enjoy my walk with the Lord. I love it. You go back to a life of sin, are you kidding me? Verse 28, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. See, the people that believe you can lose your salvation say, well, there you go, damnation to hell. It's not what it's talking about, okay? Your life will become sort of a living, you know, hell type of a thing. But it's not talking about you losing your, your salvation. We'll see that here in just a minute. You have to get the whole context of what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> if you are eating and drinking unworthily, okay, it means you're, you know, one way to say it would be you're lost, but, but in context here, what's going on is if you're not judging yourself, you're going to have some problems. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. <clears throat> How do you know it's not talking about lose, people losing their salvation? Continue reading here. Verse 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. If we live after the flesh, we shall die. Die. 
sleep. You see it? For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Judge yourself. Be harsh on yourself. Yell at yourself if you need to. Shut up. Stop saying that. Don't think that. Don't you even think about turning that thing on there. Mortify your members. Verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Right there you have it. It's not talking about you losing your eternal salvation. That's not what's going on here. That's not what this study is about. If you sin one time, you've lost your salvation and you need to get resaved, brethren. You need to be a, uh, just a continual resaving and saving and resaving and saving and resaving. Yeah, it's a good way to go crazy. Okay? You can't lose your salvation and then get it back and lose your salvation and then get it back and they'll go to Hebrews. It cracks me up. I've dealt with these people, these holiness people. And they'll, they'll go to Hebrews and they say, if we sin willfully after that we've received the, the you know, knowledge of the truth, you know, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So I can, and I say, okay, literally dealt with a guy and I, and, I, and I said, okay, so have you sinned willfully after that you've been saved? He said, yes, I have. And you know you have too. And I said, yeah, you're sure. Did you get resaved? Well, yes, by the grace of God, I did. I said, That's not what it says in the text. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You can't teach losing salvation and resaving from the book of Hebrews. You can't do it. Why? Because it's written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Hebrews, you see, they take the mark of the beast, put Jesus Christ to an open shame. There's no more sacrifice for sins after you take the mark of the beast. It changes your brain. You lose your free will. That's what's going on there. Yes, you can lose your salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. You can't lose it right now. We just read about it right there. When we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. He won't condemn you with the world. He won't send you to hell like the world's going to go. But he'll chasten you. Hey, son, you broke that neighbor's window. All right, son, come with me. We have to go talk to the neighbor. Oh, Dad, I can't do that. That's, that's embarrassing. My son hasn't done this, but, you know, doesn't matter. Let's go on over. Mr. So-and-so, my son here broke your window. What does he need to do to pay you back? Chastened, you see? If you live after the flesh, you will pay for it. And some of you out there, you know, again, some of the brethren, you messed up all kinds of things in your life. You drank, you're tattooed, you smoked, you wrecked your health. And then by the grace of God, you came to the Lord as a sinner Praise the Lord. But you know what? Your health issues are on you. You lived after the flesh, and now you're dying. You're unhealthy. I am uh, i don't think I'm ever going to live to see an old age. I think that catching up will happen you know, before then, but uh, I don't think I'm going to live very long. Um, I have health issues I don't even talk about. I've had a heart condition ever since I was a boy. Um, had my appendix burst working at a toxic factory and eating toxic food all the time. I've done a lot of damage to my body. A lot of times I'll get up and I'm just, you know, my back hurts really bad and things, you know, not paying heed when I was logging and not eating the right kind of foods and things. I ruined my lower back. Remember, I went to a chiropractor the one time and I'm, I'm there and he's working on my back and he gets down to the base of my spine and he says, uh-oh. <laughs> That's always a good thing, you know, when, you, when you're at some kind of a doctor or whatever, and they say, uh-oh, and I said, what, what's, what's going on? He said, uh, your discs and your lower back are disintegrating. Oh, well, oh, that's all. That's nice. Oh, yeah, that's great. You say, what do you do about that? Oh, pretty much live in pain. I have for years. Try to take care of myself as much as possible. Try to eat as, as I mean, that's why I'm such a fanatic for natural health and things because I realize there might be some chance that I can get something back here. I want to live after the Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, please tell me how I'm supposed to eat. I'm sorry, Lord, I shouldn't have eaten that junk food. There have been a few times since I've been saved, even since we've been here in Maine, that I just give in and I go eat some junk food or whatever else. Got some maple sugar candy not long ago and I'm 
wife and son aren't in the room and I'm thinking, oh, they, they'll, they'll get on my case, Dad, you're having too much sugar, but nobody's around. So to the flesh a little bit, eat a couple pieces, and all of a sudden my teeth start hurting. And all of a sudden I could feel my health starting to go downhill a lot quicker than normal. Stop. I'm living after the flesh. God, I'm sorry. God, help me to fight this. See, if I've, if I've led any of you out there to believe that Jesus pays for all your sins and therefore that means you should have no conviction of sin after you get saved, then I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm going to keep saying probably that Jesus paid for, Jesus can pay for your sins. He'll pay for them all and whatever else. But I need to add this extra thing to it and just simply say, let me explain what that means. You don't have to get re-saved and saved and re-saved and saved and re-saved and, and you have to die in a state of grace and you can't commit mortal sins. Or, and, and then you can maybe someday earn salvation. Maybe you might have to go through purgatory or something. It's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is Jesus Christ can save you as a sinner. But brother, sister, if you live in sin, you will pay for it. You will have pain. You will have sorrow. You will have nightmares. You will lose your eyesight. You will pay for your sin. The wages of sin is death. I do hope that you take heed to this because like I said, I've been hearing from a lot of brethren. I've seen brethren that were doing just, just great and they get to mess around with that sin. And you know, I need to kick one other thing, and that is young men. I've seen young people, they'll get into young men, not people, but young men. I've seen them, they get saved, and they'll, they'll spend a year or two, you know, studying, and all of a sudden they're ready for ministry, and I just think, well, ministry of reconciliation is there. You know, you can witness to somebody a day after you get saved, sure, absolutely. But you get out onto the battlefield with this sword of the Spirit right here, I'm ready for battle, I'm ready for anything. Do you have your sins taken care of? Young man, well, brother, I, I'm still falling into pornography once in a while, and I still play video games a little bit too much, and I, my diet's really not the best, but I'm ready to fight. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. Just back off of the battlefield, young man. You need to get those sins taken care of. You need to fight that stuff. You're not ready yet. I mean, you, some of the letters I get, I mean, I've seen young men will get into sodomy. Young men will get into fornication, relationships, just wreck their lives, get into drugs after coming to the Lord to be saved. Why? Because you think that uh, your sins are all paid for and everything's just taken care of and therefore you don't need to worry about it. You might be saved. But uh, young man, you need to take care of those sins. Young woman, you need to take care of those sins. Old man, old woman, whoever you are, you keep sin in your life, it will bite you. I'll keep preaching the Word of God. And, uh, you know, the Lord has helped me to grow up quite a bit and mature quite a bit. Um, a lot of my early stuff early on, I was very immature, and, and uh, there's just some things you can't learn any other way than just to be on the battlefield. You just have to go through it, and um, I've taken it way too easy on sin and things, and I kind of compromise, and oh yeah, well, it's not a problem, and whatever else. Uh, I ask for God's forgiveness and for the forgiveness of the body of Christ for doing that. Uh, that's, that was a mistake. I need to be a lot harder on sin. I need to take stronger stands. And uh, I need to fight in my own life. I need to fight my sin. And I pray that you do as well. I pray that you get convicted by this message and that whatever sins you are playing with, um, keeping around, you get those things worked out. Um, I've been preaching this thing for years and years. There is no such thing as a good sin. All sin is negative. Every single last sin that there is 
And if you live after the flesh, if you mess around with your sin, you will die. You will die. Um, if I gave in to the lusts of my flesh, I think I'd be dead within probably a week, <laughs> maybe even a few days, if I just let my flesh just go and do whatever it wanted to do, even if I wasn't in ministry. Um, we have to fight sin, brethren. If we want any kind of victory, if we want any kind of power going forward with the way that this world is getting, um, we need to fight sin. Uh, it's going to get rough. I've been saying that again for a long time, but um, the times that are coming are going to try you. They're going to be very horrible. And I'm afraid a lot of people aren't going to make it because you haven't learned to really fight sin. Examine yourself. You know, the, the communion, time for communion, where you think about what Jesus did on the cross and you, you come before the Lord and you say, Okay, Lord, what do I need to give up? And not just give up for 40 days of Lent like we are currently in right now, here in the month of March 2021. No, no. And then you get it back again. and uh, No, no. What do I need to give up? What do I need to burn? Is there something here in my house, Lord, that's displeasing in thy sight? Is there something that I listen to that you want me to get rid of? Is there something that I look at? Is there some channel that I shouldn't be subscribed to? What is it, Lord? I don't want anything between you and me. I want to live after the Spirit. Have the Holy Spirit, Lord, come upon me mightily right now and tell me, what do I need to give up? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Jesus Christ died for you. Will you die for him? And I'll leave it at that. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I can't go out and judge each person individually, but you can. And I know that there's a lot of brethren out there that are really messing around with sin. And Lord, I've messed around with sin for so many years and I've had so many defeats on the battlefield and I can feel the wages of sin in my body. I can feel the pains and the aches and everything else that come from a result of uh, messing around with, with sinful things, lusts of the flesh. And Lord, I pray that whoever's listening to me right now, that they would take the seriousness of sin and, and bring it before you and say, God, I'm sorry and I need your help. Help me to get victory over this. And uh, if there's some young men, Lord, I pray that they would get victory over their sins and that they would get their life cleaned up and not seek to go out onto the battlefield, Lord. They're not ready for it. They're going to die on the battlefield. They're going to lose. I pray that they would take, the, take this thing that I've been preaching here, Lord, I, I pray that they would take it seriously. Lord, help us to be better Christians. Help us to follow your word more. We need a stronger body of Christ right now. We don't need a bunch of weak people that are giving into the world and look just like the world and talk like the world and act like the world, Lord. We need a separated, holy, righteous people. Please help us to become that, Lord. I pray it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been on my mind for a while. I just don't think I'm getting through to a lot of people. You know, I thank the Lord that I'm able to reach a lot of you over the internet, over YouTube. I really am thankful for that. But uh, it's hard to be there for you, um, to help you. I do my best. I'm just one man. 40,000 something subscribers and and uh, I realize they're not all real but you know uh, there's a lot of people that contact us and, and um, we need your prayers and uh, don't don't look at me and say well brother Brian boy he's he's this great warrior for the Lord and he just doesn't struggle with sin and whatever I struggle every day I do that's why I need your prayers I can't tell you how many times I can literally feel when a Christian starts to pray for me I mean just just total spiritual attack and everything is going wrong and, and all of a sudden just my, my spirit lifts and I just think, wow, and I feel so good. And I think, 
Somebody's praying for me. I need your prayers. We need your prayers. So that is going to be it. Thank you, everybody out there, for watching. Thank you for your words of encouragement. They do mean a lot to me. And um, a lot of other studies coming up. But please, brethren, make it about you and the Lord. Get, uh, get that relationship close and, and just say, Lord, what do I need to give up? What areas of the flesh are, am I living after right now that is causing us to have a, a breach in our, in our relationship? Get it figured out. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.